we are making the creamiest, most delicious mashed potatoes with very few ingredients and they come out perfect every single time and they're gonna be a showstopper on your Thanksgiving table. Today I'm gonna to show you the easiest method for mashed potatoes and I'll give you a few tricks along the way to ensure that your mashed potatoes are the best thing on the table. If you know me, if we know each other personally, you know I am a spud, okay? I am, I'm certain that I am part potato on the inside because I love potatoes. We have not made mashed potatoes here in Lauren in the Kitchen in years and this recipe you're going to look at it and go why do you even make a video on it because it's so basic but we did say we were going to make all of the basics and all of the traditional foods for Thanksgiving and you simply cannot have Thanksgiving dinner without the best mashed potatoes. Let's start off with the potatoes in question. My favorite kind of potatoes to use for mashed potatoes are russets. Why do I like russets? Because they're fluffy, because they're they're not as buttery, they're not as, and which I like. I am much more fan of a texture of the potato rather than the flavor of the potato. I'm gonna enrich these anyway, so I'm not really concerned about getting the extra sort of buttery flavor from the potato because what matters to me more is that the texture is light and it's fluffy and it's creamy and it's delicious and I feel like the russet is the best potato for the job, but you do you. I've got a big pot of water. I just turned it on, it's not, um, it's not, boiling yet and you don't want it to be boiling. Now the next thing you want to make sure is that you don't cut your potatoes too small. The smaller the potato, the more introduction of water to the potato, which means the watery your mashed potato, the more watery your mashed potato will be and the more bland because more water introduces more bland water. Does that make sense? So I just cut them in half when they're about medium size. Um, and if they're really big, like say this guy right here, I may just do that one in thirds because the important thing is that they're all the same size so that they cook at the same speed. Now, the third important thing here is you need to make sure you are heavily salting your water before, um, you know, before these get done because otherwise, I put a little bit too much water in there. Let me get a cup, hold on. I added too much water to that pot, look at me. It's like I wasn't thinking that I was gonna add pounds of potatoes in there. Um, you wanna make sure that you're adding plenty of salt here because this is your only chance to flavor the actual inside of the potato in a really beautifully balanced way um, and you're not just salting the outside. You know what I mean? It just makes such a big difference. So a good handful of salt, bring that to a boil, reduce it down to a simmer and let that cook until the potatoes are very tender. You want these to be really tender, not somewhat tender. They should fall apart, essentially. Then we drain, and then we move on to the next step. Potatoes are done, but before we talk about them, let's make our cream mixture. Now listen, potatoes, mashed potatoes, I should say, you're gonna add milk, whole milk, and heavy cream to a saucepan with some butter. Mashed potatoes is one of those things that in my humble opinion needs all the fat, okay? It is as rich and delicious and creamy as it is because it's got all of those fats, okay? Look at what your potatoes look like. This is what your potatoes should look like, okay? I've let them cook until very soft and tender, drain them, then I put them back into the hot pot so that they could sit for a few minutes and then that residual heat from the pot would pretty much like absorb any excess water. Now there are different kinds of mashed potato people out in the world. There are the super, super, super creamy. And for that, I would suggest you use a potato ricer if you want them really thick, like sort of fluffy and creamy. Then there are the very lumpy people who basically just take a masher and they go over it once or twice and that's it. And then there's the people like me that are somewhat in the middle. I feel like whatever mashed potato consistency you like is what you should go for. I don't necessarily feel like you need to please the aesthetically beautiful pictures you see on the internet of the super smooth mashed potatoes if that's just not what you like, okay? So I go about halfway between the two. Now, you shouldn't have to, not that I'm saying you won't, but I'm saying you shouldn't have to re-season your potatoes if you added enough of salt into the boiling water. I tasted mine and they don't need any additional salt. They are on their own, borderline salty, but when you add the heavy cream 
and that butter mixture with a little cream cheese, yes, I said cream cheese, don't run away, it all balances itself, like it all balances each other really well and it just becomes this like incredible emotion of goodness. You will need lots of salt and pepper. You're gonna need to warm up your cream because you never wanna add cold milk to hot potatoes because you'll turn them into glue. I add a little bit at a time along with my cream cheese, which may not look like a lot, but trust me, you just need a couple of ounces for this amount with some black pepper. And I start with a little bit at a time and then I will add more. See how dry that looks? Nobody wants a dry mashed potato. I'm gonna add some more. If you like a little tang, you can add a nice spoon or two of sour cream as well. And that would make it absolutely glorious and luscious, but you don't have to. I'm just gonna keep giving this a, a mix until like, all of the cream and milk and butter is incorporated and I'll show you the final consistency. I want you to see how glorious that looks. It is just creamy and delicious. I know a ton of people will whip theirs with a, like a standing mixer. I just don't do that because here's the thing, done wrong or whipped for too long, they turn into absolute like glue. And that is like a fear of mine because it's just not the vibe. It is just not the vibe. I like them a little lumpy. If you want them super smooth, like I said, go ahead and use a potato ricer. Won't hurt my feelings. It's all about how you like it. Little dab of butter. Imagine that pulled up with tons of gravy. A bit more black pepper. My mother would tell you it's a white food, so you should use white pepper, but she's not here. I'm 37, I make my own rules and I pay my own bills. So I use black pepper, <laughs> so I like it. Anyway, look at that. The butter is starting to melt. It is perfection. It is just my kind of heaven. Look at that. Beautiful, luscious. Mm. Tastes incredible. Incredible. The ma best mashed potatoes you'll eat. The best mashed potatoes anybody at your table will eat. It will rival any restaurant. Not that any restaurant could possibly make a better mashed potato. Let's be for real meant to be on your Thanksgiving table or any holiday table. Go to lara in the kitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.